Welcome to the Marketing Strategies for Drastic Results video cast. My name is Tony Harris Taylor. I'm the CEO and founder of Drastic Results Marketing and Sales Coaching, where I help entrepreneurs and franchisees learn how to get known, get connected, and get paid. I'm also an award winning franchisee with Network in Action Global Partners, where I bring entrepreneurs together to help them to build relationships, to get intentional referrals, and those relationships last a lifetime. Welcome to today's episode. Today, we're going to talk about books for marketing. Why should you have a book to market your expertise. So, you know, it used to be that being an author was a really big deal and it's still a big deal because I believe there's a lot of people that have stories within them that never get their books out. And so the first thing I want to encourage you to do, especially with AI, there's so many easy ways to get your book done now that you actually concentrate and focus on getting a book written, not AI written, but with the assistance of AI. And so I have two books in my hand. I have done 12 books. My first book was released in 2011. And to date, I have 12 books. Some of them have become Amazon bestsellers. And but I want to focus on these two books, which were released in 2023. Uh, I am a contributing author to the book, Wealth Building with Franchise, collaborated by Linda Ballesteros. And my latest book, which you'll hear more at the end of the show about, Show Up, Be Up, Follow Up to Blow Up. Now, why do I recommend you write a book? Because it does still make you stand out from a crowded space, and it's your leave behind for your trainings, your coachings. Um, and so people, and it also can be the foundation for a course. I'm building my course with this. And so you want to make sure that you encapsulate your philosophies in a book. And I, frankly, you can buy the book, on Amazon. And I would love for you to purchase the book in support and read it. Don't just purchase it and not read it. Purchase it, read it and implement. But I also use the book as a calling card. It is my way to open the door to clients in the sales realm, right? So I want to show up as an expert. So sometimes I give the book away to a prospect who has the power to hire me, I don't just give it away willy nilly, but I give it away to a prospect who has the power to hire me. And that way they can see uh, and read a little bit about why they should bring me in to coach their franchisees um, and to teach entrepreneurs. So a book is a great way to showcase your expertise. Today's guest is a fellow NIA franchisee uh, Mr. Scott Marker, he recently released a book as well, and it became an Amazon bestseller. And we're going to talk about his marketing strategy for his book. But his book is really a unique message. And I wanted you to meet him so that you could learn how to be better if you are selling um, B2B. And that's his expertise. So we're going to come back in just a moment with my friend, Mr. Scott Marker. We'll be right back.
Are you a franchisor grappling with how to stimulate your franchisee's growth and revenue? Are the phrases, I'm not comfortable networking, I'm an introvert, enter Tony Harris Taylor, your answer to these challenges. With her expert guidance and program, you can empower your franchisees to conquer networking and community outreach. Tony's program is designed to equip your franchisees with the skills and confidence to show up to the right events with the right people. It goes beyond making connections. It's about nurturing and leveraging these relationships. It's about following up, collaborating, and generating leads and referrals to maximize conversions, and ultimately increase revenue for your franchisees and for you, the franchisor. Are you ready to unlock this potential? Reach out to us at 832-479-2088. Let's embark on this journey of growth and success together. We are back with my friend, Scott Marker. Hi, Scott. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on. Awesome. So I just got to give you a little backstory. When I was investigating buying my franchise, Scott was one of the franchisees that I was recommended to speak to be, while I was doing my due diligence. And he was very instrumental in helping me to move forward with my decision to become a franchise owner with Network in Action. And if I've never thanked you for that, Scott Marker, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> but we're here today to talk about you as an author, two-time author. And I I'm and I'm, want to congratulate you, first of all, to, for getting the book out of you onto the page as a legacy to leave behind. But in your own words, who are you? What do you do? And tell us a little bit about the book. I'm a person that's just, uh, I'm like a lot of people right out of college. I first job was in the sales and then, uh, I, so I've been in sales my whole life. And then I got in a role where I was in, you know, head of director of marketing and sales. So I've had both, both backgrounds, but my passion has been, uh, the occupation of a salesperson is, not the best right now in the last couple of years, Gartner was one. They did a study like two years ago and over half of B2B buyers don't want a salesperson involved in their decision, uh, you know, in their buying, buying process anymore. And that's because of uh, what's the way companies uh, treat, treat their salespeople. They say they're, they say how important they are, but they have in B2B companies on average, they have, at least three times the turnover rate of any other position. And so I, I kind of took it on to myself and, and really when I wrote my first book, I thought things would change and they got worse. And so that's really the passion of me writing my books is, is trying to change the way companies treat sales professionals and then getting sales professionals the respect they deserve. So the name of the book is Broken how to fix B2B sales, drive profitable growth and win. Broken? Wow, that's a strong name. So how did you come up with that name? Uh, it was kind of weird is that uh, another person I really respect that has like multi, like, you know, I think he has 22 books out. And he, I was listening to him talk to somebody and they said, your book title is too long. You need to make it short, shorter. And I started noticing that I kept saying when I was being interviewed uh, up to publishing my book that sales is broken, sales is broken. And that was kind of the moment it was like, that has to be the name of my book. And so the cool part is, is even on the, 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 the thing that the O is a hamster wheel with a guy running in the, in the oh, hamster wheel. Oh, I see that. So, I like that. Yeah, so that, let's talk about what's broken in the sales process. Keep, keep a real simple thing the the model, the traditional model of uh, B2B sales is broken. And why is it broken? It's because companies push KPIs, compensation and goals that have nothing to do with the success of the buyer. Nothing. They're all mm. about they're all about closing them, not helping them, selling them and closing them. And then what happens? Wells Fargo is a perfect case study. They took cross-selling, which I call cross-serving, cross-selling and, and did exactly that. Everybody in the branch had high goals, 
it went viral. 3.5 million fake accounts were set up. People lost their homes and cars because just like traditional, everybody in the bank, bank was a traditional salesperson. And what happens when you're, if you don't meet your goal at the end of the month and you get threatened to get fired, unethical behavior. And so mm. we need to have, which I'll talk about in the, the chair, but that, that's, that's, that's why it's broken is because it, the, the KPIs, compensation and goals are not in line with the, what's best for the buyer. Well, now that is a different, different way to look at it. So that's, that, that's very, very interesting. I never even thought about it that way, but it's true. It encourages unethical behavior because the strategies got us some feedback. Let me see what's happening. So what I hear you saying is traditional um, B2B sales encourages unethical behavior. So what would a sales manager need to do in order to change the traditional model? Well, the model I recommend is a buyer centric one where you make all the KPIs and the compensation and the goals customer centric. How do you do that? First of all, get rid of commissions off of any one sale, get rid of the commissions because either you're going to make somebody win a new Tesla and that's going to cause an ethical behavior or they're desperate to save their job and, and make their goals because their boss is on their butt. So what you need to do is, is have compensation. N none of this low, uh, uh, super low or no base salaries, pay them a full salary. They're professionals like everybody else. And then not just salespeople, the whole company is going to become buyer centric and everybody gets bonus off of only bringing in the right type of customers. How do you do that? Customer service rates the customer. How good of customers are they? Because a lot of times traditional sales, salespeople are just trying to get anything to get the quarter in, bring in the wrong customer and the wrong customer costs the company a lot of money. So they get bonus on bring in only the, everybody gets uh, only bringing in the right type of customers and then up serving and cross serving them, not selling. You got to change your language. It's all about serving them. And then as we, as they grow, we give out bonuses to the whole company. So that's now, the way you do it. So ladies and gentlemen, this show is called drastic results. And when I say your plan is drastic, are you ready to stand on that? I mean, yeah. it's yeah. very what you uh, what you're saying is get rid of the really century the way sales has been done for centuries, I think, with commission based and really focus and but you know what? That's revolutionary. It is drastic. I think you really should get that to market, Scott. There's too many companies that have it that's based on their goals and not on the goals of the client. So I love what you're saying. And there's, there's, so the, the two things it's going to do is one, it's going to bring in more because more money for the company. And what else is it going to do? Why? Because another thing I talk about in my book is the average sales professional in B2B sales for a decade is 14 to 18 months. It takes six months, six to seven months to ramp up. You only have bringing in, bringing in business. You only have a short, you know, six months of time or so bringing it. Just imagine if everybody in your company was looked at as a professional, not under high, high pressure to do the wrong things. Now you're going to brag on social media. We don't have salespeople, right? We have experts in the field that on average have been here two or three times longer than our competitors. So you think someone that's been doing sales for a company for three years is going to do better than six months? Of course they are. Of course they so are. So there's another benefit. So retention is another benefit. And when you have a more experienced long-term sales, that produces more sales. I love what you're saying. We offline need to talk about how to get that into the marketplace. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about networking. 
and how networking plays a part in the B2B sales role. Okay, we are back with my friend, Scott Marker. Scott has a revolutionary way to fix B2B sales. And I love what you are saying, Scott. So let's talk a little bit about networking because you and I both have a networking franchise. So how does networking play a role in your new revolutionary way to do B2B sales? Well, something I've been talking about for a long time is uh, it now is, uh, for 15 years since my first book is networking. What is is partnerships and referral partners right now? The, the in market, there's less people in market than ever in B2B sales. So more and more companies are starting to understand the power of referral partners. Cause what does that do? It's a shortcut. And I got a saying, most traditional sales have their salespeople go knock on a hundred doors looking for a problem. Referral partners vet prospects for you because you they you a good referral partner knows what you do very well. They send warm warm leads to you, people that have problems you can fix. So you're not knocking knocking my door. Problems come to you that you can fix. That's the brilliance of, of networking partners. Awesome. And I agree with you a hundred percent. If you know, when I teach my networking. I'm telling them looking for you when you are networking, you're looking for your strategic referral partners who can open doors for you or they're already in the door. All they got to do is hold it open for you. So I 100 percent agree with that. Now, you are able to get your book to bestseller status. You had over 14,000 downloads. Uh, That was 1,400. 1,400. Sorry, 1,400 downloads. And you were able to get. several off of Kindle as well. So what's your marketing strategy for your book? You, you know, I, I, when I wrote a book, I'm not looking, I'm not, I'm not looking to sell a lot of books. Okay. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking it, it just something like my first book was about uh, uh, account-based marketing, which is not the net approach, the narrow approach. I want the right people to read my book. It's not for everybody. And That's so, right. And, and like you mentioned in the in the beginning, is what does the book do for you? Right, it 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 makes you an expert. So that's that helps you get indoors, you know, for doing consulting, uh, and and in, in uh, NIA the networking. I have a lot of people that will check me out on LinkedIn and go, "Wow, you're like a you're like a two time author," and it, it just gives you more credibility. So I I market it kind of organically. A lot of it, I'm not. I'm not out running ads or nothing. I just, yeah, I, I post about it and I get people on LinkedIn that I respect. Sometimes I'll reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, uh, you, I saw that you really were engaged with my, my comments, you know, on my post, would you ever want to read my book? And they say, I'd love to read your book. And then I've also had other people from all over the world reach out to me and say how I changed the way they look at sales. So I love that. Congratulations. Organic. I love organic and I love just using it to showcase your expertise. All right. So this question I ask all my guests and, you know, I got to take it back to drastic. So what's the biggest drastic step you've taken in business? I'll give you a minute because we've been in business a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm telling you the drastic writing a book. Yeah. 
I mean, it, yeah. it, it is, I mean, that is, it, it, what is it? It helps me understand, be able to coach other people better. Writing a book is, is as much for the author <laughs> to be oh, able yeah. to understand and be able to explain their ideas better. So I think writing a book is just a great exercise for a business leader to get better at. And plus what do you do when you write books? A lot of times you get speaking gigs. That's right. You get better at communicating. So for me, it has to be the book. And, and, writing then, the, and the exercise of writing the book and then getting and then like anyway, and, and, and so for me it's, it's the book for sure. Awesome. And then um, we didn't touch on this, so I don't want to leave the show without it. AI. You've become uh, I've become AI certified. You've become an AI enthusiast yeah. for sales. So how could a B2B salesperson... How can a B2B salesperson use AI to enhance their client-centric sales? A lot of ways. Here one, here's one right now. Okay, let's say you've had uh, 10 proposals in the last six months you've given out. Take those proposals and dump them in chat and say, hey, what's the difference? What, what, what? Here's the winners. These, these five are winners. Let's say you have 10. These five are winners. These five are losers. What's... What's the difference between them? There's one. Here's another. Oh. Mm. I had, I, I coached one of my NAI members on this that has a roofing company. She didn't know how to respond to some people that told her they weren't interested. So I told her to dump it in the chat and ask chat how to reply back to get them to change their mind. And guess what? She did, I think she said she did 10 of them and got two people that said they're interested. Okay. Yeah. That's a really good tip. I'm actually going to use that. I got a, a proposal that's getting stale. And so, and the person's not calling me back. And so I will use that tip today to reach out to the person. Well, stop marker. This is time flies um, when you're having fun. And I so appreciate your perspective on B2B sales. Um, how can people get in touch with you if they want to connect with you? Easiest ways on LinkedIn. I wear this shirt, um, and this is kind of a branding thing. I wear a shirt like this on LinkedIn. That's the best way. I, I love connecting with people on LinkedIn. I I'm start. I'm committing to uh, starting to post videos that. Um, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'm, I'm giving away a lot of strategies. I'm just give like that. I gave away a, a AI strategy in my last post last week. I gave away one that's just how do how do you get more referral partners? I I tell you how to use chat to do it. Awesome. Follow awesome. Him awesome. Follow him on LinkedIn. Send him a DM. Tell him that you want him to talk to your sales manager because they're pretty mention too much. That you, mention that you heard me here on Tony's show because I absolutely felt, everybody, uh, everybody's in if they do that. Absolutely. But if you're a B2B salesperson and you feel like y'all's methodology is tired and needs a drastic revamp, reach out to Scott Marker. He has some great ideas. And um, he would be a great person to connect to your leadership. Well, I'm so happy to have you here, Scott, and grateful that you are in my life from the beginning of my NIA journey. This year will be our fifth year, and I'm grateful for you. And I'm, I'm same with you, Tony. I really appreciate you too, and I appreciate awesome. you for letting me opportunity to be on the show. Well, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with my final thoughts.
That's right. Pick up your book, show up, be up, follow up to blow up at showuptoblowup.com. That will send you right to the Amazon page where you can order your book and have it in a couple of days. I also wanted to mention, we talked about books and how books can be great for marketing, but I don't want to leave without talking about my latest collaboration book, Purpose, People, and Profits, How Everyday Entrepreneurs Create Drastic Results. This is the, the 17 authors that contributed to this book. You too can find this on Amazon. But if you don't feel like you want to do the whole book by yourself, you can always do a, a uh, collaboration book with people who are uh, in a similar space as you and they have a story to share as well. Books are not hard. You just have to make up your mind and get drastic and get it done. I'm so grateful that all of you are tuning in. And if you would, please, sharing is caring. So share this with your network on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. And make sure you hit the subscribe on YouTube so you never miss another episode. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. This is Tony Harris Taylor saying, take a drastic step today for a fantastic tomorrow. See you next week. Bye.